Uh, I'm going to say a few things that uh, we all know, but uh, starting out with, it's good to see everybody. This is Johnny Zelle. I'm the uh, chair of the Blue Line Extension Corridor Management Committee, CMC, uh, also chair of that council. And um, I'm going to make a few reminders. First, hey, this is a virtual meeting, and we're going to continue to have virtual meetings uh, for the safety of community members. Uh, but uh, uh, there's uh, any public members uh, joining in, uh, feel free to give any comments you have to uh, Sophia Guinness, who is here. That's uh, sophia.ginis at metrotransit.org. Uh, we will certainly uh, rec record your comments, questions. Uh, answer them and put that all on the project website, which is Blue Line EXT. That's one word, Blue Line EXT.org. So, now uh, to do a little introduction, what we've done in the past, I'll uh, introduce uh, uh, organizations and people can kind of jump in and uh, quickly uh, say hello. I'll start with Met Council and Charlie Zelli, and I see a few others from the council on board who are members. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Reva Chambliss, Metropolitan Council District 2 representative. Hey, Reva. Who else? All right, how about Hennepin County? Noreen Fernando is here, Hennepin County Commissioner District 2 and Chair of our Rail Authority. Hey, hey everyone, this is, Ely, this is Ely Farhat on behalf of Chair Green. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Uh, Brooklyn Park. Uh, Tanya West Hafner, um, Mayor Pro Tem and Central District Council Member. Welcome. Crystal. Jim Adams, Crystal Mayor. And Robinsdale. Bill Blonigan, Robbinsdale Mayor, thanks. Golden Valley. Today or not yet, but how about City of Minneapolis? All right, Brooklyn Center. All right, New Hope, I know is here. Kathy Hemkin, Mayor of New Hope. Kathy. Maple Grove. Mike Copat's staff is here. Osseo. This is Alicia Vickerman from Osseo City Council here. Thank you. Hey, okay, welcome. All right, how about the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board? Chris Meyer, Park Board District 1. Chris? Uh, about the Blue Line Coalition? Denise Butler, uh, Blue Line Coalition, African Career Education and Resource Inc. Hello, this is Nicole Bueller, Blue Line Coalition, and Harrison Neighborhood Association. Oh. Uh, how about our CAC, Community Advisory Committee? How about the BAC, Business Advisory Committee? Greetings, everyone. Felicia Perry, uh, co-chair of the BAC. Hi, Felicia. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Steinelzer, co-chair of the BAC with Felicia. Great. And I see the MAC. Airport Commission. Good morning, everyone. Bridget Reed, Vice President for Planning and Development. Welcome. And uh, MnDOT, I see. Uh, good morning, Mike Barnes, MnDOT's Metro District Engineer. Oh, Mike. And Met Transit, Metro Transit. All right, and then of course we have uh, quite a few project team and staff on board. Uh, did I miss any members uh, of the committee? 
Okay, well, then uh, we're gonna jump into the agenda. It's, uh, we have a lot of, we haven't met this last month, but uh, that didn't stop the progress on the project. A lot to report on and uh, uh, some new uh, initiatives and we're gonna really get into the anti-displacement uh, updates. So let's start with a minutes though, uh, approval of July 15th. Uh, meeting minutes, and uh, those were sent out in advance. If there's any edits, uh, let me know, or you can let the staff know. Okay. Chair Zelli, uh, yes. hearing hearing no edits, Bill Blonigan, I move approval of the minutes. Thank you, Mayor. Is Mike, there a second? Mike Steinels are here with second. All right, any discussion? All right, Don is here. Don, will you call the roll? Council Member Chambliss? Aye. Commissioner Fernando? Aye. Mayor Blanagan? Aye. Mayor Adams? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem West Hafner? Aye. Denise Butler? Aye. Nicole Bueller? Aye. Bridget Reef. Aye. Mike Barnes. Aye. Felicia Perry. Aye. Mike Steinhauser. Aye. And Chair Zelli. Aye. All right, those minutes are approved. Let's jump into the reports from the Community Advisory Committee and the Business Advisory Committee. And I see uh, Jason Greenberg is here. So, Jason, do you want to? Uh... Yeah, sorry, it's a little late. Um, so, yeah, so we, you know, got a lot of new information in this most recent meeting. Um, not a ton of questions, but really focused on community engagement and just community involvement around displacement, um, opportunities around businesses and jobs and things like that, not only from the, the development around the project, but also within the project of jobs coming from light rail and being part of transit and, and things like that. So those were really the main questions, but I think we were just getting a lot of new information around uh, the station at North Memorial, um, you know, utilizing the resources from Cura, uh, as well as things that are happening in Minneapolis. So um, kind of digging into that, but we didn't have a ton of feedback yet because a lot of that new information was new. Right, thank you. Um, and now for the BAC, uh, Felicia, do you have a report? Yes, thank you, Chairman Zell. Um, so oh. the BAC, we met on the uh, 14th and um, we reviewed uh, some of the public engagement that had been happening over uh, the last month. Um, folks have been really active in the community engagement space and um, got uh, different uh, insights and feedback from folks. Um, we also went over the County Road 81 update in Robbinsdale. Um, there was a lot of good discussion around what's happening at the North Memorial um, Station area, as well as what's happening on Bass Lake Road, and um, also discuss up, uh, the upcoming community workshop. Um, and in Minneapolis, also community workshop coming up where um, we'll be able to, um, where some of that engagement will get uh, more deeper discussion with community um, and businesses around uh, what their station locations may look like and, and other insights from there. We also reviewed the project schedule, um, talked uh, and reoriented ourselves around like our timeline for the draft report and developing that final report and review. And lastly, um, it was announced to our um, committee, uh, the choice for the anti-displacement facilitator um, selection. And so we were um, excited to learn that it was Cura and we learned a bit more about um, uh, that project team and, and their work. Uh, I think I covered everything. Mike, let me know if I missed anything. 
No, no, you hit it well. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, wonderful. Thank you, Felicia. You have been really engaged in on these uh, these last uh, last couple of months. Uh, any questions for the BAC or the CAC? All right, I note that we've now been joined by uh, Councilmember Lilligren. Welcome, Robert. Um, so let's uh, move on to public engagement. Uh, kind of like uh, we've had a busy summer. And uh, as I said, here we are in the fall. Um, I know that uh, there's been a lot of meetings a lot of uh, consideration of various route options, many voices. Um, so Sophia uh, is going to give us a little update as to what we've been hearing. Sophia. Thank you, Chair, committee members. I'm Sophia Guinness, manager of our public involvement for this project. I want to give everybody a little bit of update of what we've been doing this summer, both uh, our, the project staff as well as the community cohort that has been very engaged. So uh, to, to kind of Around everybody. Uh, in the summer in July, we previewed and started talking about both what LIT could look like in communities with our visualizations and our station study area. So really starting to talk about you know where 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 do you connect, right? Not just lines on a map, but putting some definition around both. And so that we we got to start talking to the public about that and advance the conversation. And with that, uh, in those two months, we had about about 45 events. Eight of those included open houses and all of our corridor cities, but it also was pop-up events, uh, going where people are, attending community events, uh, really cool things hosted by our cohort that the project staff was able to attend. And just as, as, uh, uh, as Felicia said, just really being out and about. Also, you know, uh, while we have the official number, we also do a lot of just like door knocking and checking in and phone calls. And so that's not necessarily reflected in that 45, but just want the committee to know that the team is out, out and about, the cohort is out and about, and we're, we're, we're trying to connect and just uh, get people's feedback. With that, we, have, we know we did talk to at least about 2,000 folks over those past couple months, and our interactive map got 220 comments. And so it's, it's, uh, it's still up if you wanna go and look at some of that conversation that people are able to reply to each other. So you start to see some of that dialogue form around some of our station areas and uh, some of what we're showing with our LRT. To give a little bit of a flavor of what people let us know about, uh, specifically to the station study areas and then the visualizations, was for the station study areas, folks mainly told us, yeah, that seems about right. You know, kind of figure out the details about placement. The, uh, folks have different reasons for why, you know, within a bubble, a station be, should be placed one, uh, more one way or another way. And so you heard you heard that conversation. We did hear a little bit uh, in Minneapolis about you can't even see the dots. Um, uh, maybe tighter station spacing, but overall, at least where those main dots were, seemed to be uh, about about the right location, and that we can kind of figure out through that process as we place things specifically. Regarding the visualizations. It's a little bit different in each community. For our Brooklyn Park folks, they've, their visualizations have been around for quite some time. So it was, it was kind of going back, why did you make some of these decisions? How did this park and ride get placed here and not another place? Uh, you know, how did you come up with this site design? Let's walk through it and really get into those details. And a lot of the other places like Crystal, um, you know, we heard a lot about pedestrian connections and safety. And so that's that's something that we've been talking about for a long time, and the designers are definitely keyed into that as we move forward in the process. In Robbinsdale, uh, you know, pedestrian safety, a lot of questions about traffic flow and how the LRT and uh, the road work together. You know, you see the visualizations of, of how that could look. Community cohesion, connections into downtown. Uh, and again, we always we've, we heard it from almost day one when we started at Project 2.0, but just the connection to North, North Memorial Hospital, uh, the importance of that, and potentially park and ride options. For Minneapolis, the visualizations, I would say, spurred even more questions uh, to get into details. So how do the turn lanes work? How do you place these stations? How does it all really fit together? Uh, you, you know, for Lowry, there's bike accommodations. So how would that kind of what we're showing, how does that really work? Let's get into those details. Uh, pedestrian crossings, especially maybe at uh, unsignalized intersections and how that would work. 
And of course, um, one of the biggest themes that we continue to hear and discuss with the community is uh, potential property impacts in both the direct and direct displacement. Um, as the conversation has evolved in the last kind of even a few weeks, I would say we've heard more from the community and started talking more about like a community benefit um, of the project and how all of that kind of how all of that kind of works. And so a lot more conversation to be had, but you know, as we show this more detail, uh, it's it's nice to see the conversation advance and as we try to answer more questions and whatnot. So that's that's a small summary of uh, what, what, uh, what we've heard. There's obviously a lot more detail within that, but at least that hopefully gives you a flavor of some of the themes and reactions that we've received. Well, thanks so much, Sophia. And uh, 2000 conversation, that's, you've been really giving a lot of feedback and I know it's really important that we have full consideration of residents, businesses, this is a, uh, quite a puzzle that you have been hearing about. Any questions for Sophia? We are, what we've heard. Yeah, I, I have a question. This is Nicole Bueller from the Blue Line Coalition. Sure, go ahead, Nicole. Um, so I guess maybe it's more of a comment, but I would just add that a lot of what we've been hearing, and I'm a member of the community engagement cohort and what I've been hearing there is that when people are out, you know, having these conversations about route selection, Lowry or West Broadway, for example, um, that it's really difficult for community members to make that decision without knowing what the impacts would be potentially for displacement, either direct or indirect on either Lowry or West Broadway. So without having that information in front of them, it's difficult for them to say, OK, yeah, we would prefer West Broadway or we would prefer Lowry. So my, I guess there's my comment. My question is, is there going to be um, an attempt to be able to show that to community before yes. expecting folks to select a route? Okay, would you like me to take answer? Yeah, go ahead, Sophia. Good question, Nicole. Go ahead. Yeah, Nicole, I, I would say we we 100% uh, agree with that, right? You need to be able to see kind of the picture um, and so as we work, uh, and Dan will give a little bit of an update this in, about this in his section, uh, as, as we get into the fall having workshops that really both go into the details of how it all fits, what does that mean, uh, and just even those project evaluation criteria, kind of the, the whole picture of the project. Um, definitely, definitely agree that that needs to be part of the conversation and that is what we're, what we're working towards. Thank you for raising that issue. It is uh, kind of a process and getting not total information and understanding is kind of as we get deeper into it, that awareness will start becoming more, uh, more evident. Any other thoughts, questions? Yeah, I have one comment. Um, I've had time to walk from business to business throughout Robbinsdale and uh, I've done this a couple times and this last time a lot of the conversation was centered around the construction process and how the construction is going to affect the business over a five-year term. And I've mentioned this to Sophia. Um, it could be disastrous for a business if you know their their roads are closed or and we've talked about divergence things like that. Just the implication that there's going to be construction scares probably half the people I talk to. Um, they're very concerned about traffic flows. They're very concerned about, you know, ultimately what happens with the, the light rail. And I've had several say, many of them say that they still think it's on the old Burlington Northern line. So I spent a lot of time educating them, but I think that's got to be addressed a little bit harder up front for the business side, because, you know, some of them are coming up on leases in the next three, four years, and they're wondering, maybe I should stay, maybe I should move. What is this going to look like? So I think that needs to be an integral part of how we communicate, at least to the business side. Yeah, great comment. It's not just a long-term vision. It's like, okay, how about the next, how about those years of construction, which are disruptive? How does it actually work? Okay, great, great comment. Um, any, any, um, anything? Council yeah. Member Chambliss. Go ahead, Reva. Uh, yes, I have a couple of comments to make. Uh, what was presented today about the community feedback um, I was glad to uh, see the summary of feedback um, 
throughout the corridor and also in uh, Brooklyn Park where there are not as many station changes. But again, I wanna reiterate that uh, in order to uh, engage and energize uh, the northern part of the corridor, we really want to make sure that our community members are just as excited um, and are looking to the future in terms of what community developments and community benefits and what um, might have been missing from the prior uh, community engagement that they may have an opportunity now to address. And then secondly, in terms of anti-displacement, um, not only do I agree that we need to speak to the businesses about their impacts, but we should be looking at the historical uh, community um, assets that we've had in, along the corridor. Currently, we should look at uh, current um, and those historical assets in terms of what should be retained and what needs to be redeveloped. The current assets in terms of uh, what should be retained and uh, developed. And then for the future, um, what kind of pre-development uh, community planning should be done so that um, those communities, particularly in the corridors that are at risk and underserved, uh, have their needs met early enough for them to um, be impacted in a positive way. Right, thank you. Really great feedback. Any, uh, I don't see any other hands. Uh, anybody have any other additional comments at this point? All right, thanks. Uh, well, thanks again for the comments, the feedback, uh, the ideas. It really is important that we share information um, and insights. And so much of it is local, as we are understanding. Uh, this is a project that uh, varies depending upon uh, the section of the project. So it's important we get all those uh, information shared uh, to inform our pathway, which is really uh, coming up in the next few months to really decide those committee meetings uh, how to go forward. Um, so I, I do, I'm sorry, I do have one more question. Sure. Go Actually, ahead, Nicole. Uh, it's never about, too late. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, the So the data in terms of outreach, um, Sophia, could you maybe tell us if there are gaps with regard to different um, groups, particular particularly BIPOC groups? I know that in the first round of engagement that we did for phase one, a lot of the survey responses were predominantly from um, white folks. So I'm wondering in this second round of engagement, what those gaps might look like and if there's a plan to address those gaps going forward. Um, I would say that now that we are able to be more in person, um, we have really been able to close that gap um, just because we're able to go to where people are and you know there's both been intentionality about door knocking and being places and it's not only the the staff um but the community engagement cohort that you're a part of um you know reaching different constituent groups and all that all that kind of stuff we don't necessarily track you know say we're at an event and we speak with 100 people we don't necessarily track exactly the exact composition of everybody that we've talked to but we do make sure that we're we're getting out and about and 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 getting all voices. So I, I there's there being in person and being able to go places really really helps with that digital divide. Great question and thanks for knowing that. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, County Road 81 update. Nick has been literally on the road. And I think this is a good example of uh, kind of understanding what these impacts are. We're actually looking at some uh, visual uh, renderings of these various options. And I think uh, you've been Nick, engaged with uh, North Memorial Hospital, as well as some of the concepts for uh, the City of Crystal as well. So uh, as we advance the community conversations, uh, this is really a real time helpful uh, update. So Nick, take it away. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
Uh, yes, today we're focusing on County Road 81, uh, and as the chair said, uh, we, we we want to bring up to this committee, you know, some areas where we're we're, we're paying maybe a, a bit more attention because there's there, there's a, a couple more items that need to address and 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 to evaluate to, to, as we go forward. So, uh, starting down Robbinsdale, uh, uh, North Memorial Hospital area where we, where uh, Lowry and uh, um, and West Broadway uh, converge together and, and and join up to um, County Road 81 is one of these areas of you know how do we how do we transition from a West Broadway route or a Lowry route into County Road 81 and then you know also address you know with a a a, a new destination uh, uh, for the project you know how how would we connect or get a station in the area of North Memorial that would serve the both the hospital and the communities around it and then this location it's it's both uh, the city of robbinsdale and uh minneapolis as well as uh as as the, the minneapolis park board in, in this area so a lot of stuff going around along in this in this area with with the convergence of lowry west broadway and 81 um and the uh the, the parks and trails system through here and uh you know one of the things that we're looking at is is west broadway uh, those bridges uh, are under construction at this time. So how do we how do we fit through there? So we came up with a couple options, uh, concepts and options for these concepts of how we could address the issues in this area. And this first one we're looking at, option one, is is just as we're continuing up. If you look at the graphic on the right hand side, uh, the north to south is up through the page where we're looking north in this location with with uh, uh, North Memorial Hospital kind of. In, uh, Towards the top, and uh, this one we're we're coming from a center running position uh, configuration up West Broadway, and as we're getting to the the new bridges being constructed, those are what are are, are shown in this graphic that the new bridge configuration. Uh, how do we get between those bridges and, and and over? And so we've evaluated that there's really not enough room to squeeze between the two bridges that are being constructed, but uh, you know, there's an opportunity that we could come up. Um, stay in the center of them, but come up and over. And uh, what we're showing here is up and over on a structure. And on the left-hand side, you can see uh, this is looking more towards the south, how a station would fit in this area. And this station that we're showing, uh, you know, it does have uh, a potential connection to uh, North Memorial, uh, to their park and ride area, uh, or to their parking lot area. And uh, also, uh, there would be a potential or there, there would be a connection down to grade from this area that that would connect into what we're seeing as the intersection of Abbott and County Road 81 in this area. Um, I'm going to move on to the, the next option. I, I, I do have some videos of of these options to, that flies around and, and gives a little bit more uh, 360 context of how these work. Now, uh, option two in this area, West Broadway, uh, that the first option we show, we have to get up pretty high with a bridge to get up over the exist or over the, the bridges that are being constructed on West Broadway. This option, um, option two, veers out over one of the lanes of uh, that, that's that southbound lane of, of County Road 81 uh, with the light rail. So we come up from center running at grade uh, up and over that southbound lane and make a curve that, that, that takes us over towards that hospital area. And one of the things that this option does is, is makes that, that structure a little bit lower uh, so we could pull the station a little bit farther to the south. And in this configuration, it, saw, it would serve both um, the North Memorial Hospital and have a, maybe a more robust connection to the, to the trail system, the parks, and, and Oakdale and Lowry in this area to, to the sidewalks. So that's, the, uh, that's one of the benefits of this option that we're showing. Um, we're going to move on to the next one, and this is uh, a, a connection from Lowry and how the a connection from Lowry would work. So this is coming uh, on the left-hand side. Uh, Lowry is, is, is this is kind of looking west. So this is Lowry coming, um, or, or looking east, excuse me. This is Lowry coming west brown on, on a structure, and, and we start coming up over in grade and connects back to uh, a center running configuration on 81. So. Um, as you look at the left hand side, that gives us more of that north uh, looking view again as, as we're looking up um, West Broadway. You can see how the, the a bridge structure comes up from Lowry, uh, sweeps around into a, a center running configuration um, uh, at, on County Road 81 and connects to North Memorial Hospital. So I'm going to uh, move forward here. We're going to look at a couple videos that, that we have. So go back. 
So we'll look at this first video here, and this is the Lowry configuration, and it'll give us a 360 of, of how it looks. So we're starting off, you know, up above looking uh, to the north, and we'll, we'll swing around through this and see how it works. So coming up from a center running at grade on Lowry, building up to a structure that, that, that uh, um, kind of mirrors the, the ramp from Lowry onto County Road 81. You can see how a, uh, a train fits here, a station would be located. This station, again, because of the grades, pushes more towards that, that Abbott Avenue area, um, having a connection to Abbott Avenue and uh, a potential connection to the hospital uh, parking, parking, parking lot, parking ramp. And uh, you know these are these videos are really you know they, they they look fairly detailed but they are based on on a very uh, uh, minimal amount of engineering you know we're probably less than five percent engineering right now so if if you if you start looking too closely there there's there's a lot of details that are maybe not showing but this is more of an, an idea of how things can fit and what the massing is of 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 it and and how it would work so. Uh, the next video that we're bringing up here is that first option of uh, West Broadway going uh, north onto uh, County Road 81. So this is set, stays center running here um, and goes between the two bridges that are under construction for County Road 81 or the West Broadway over Lowry. So again, uh, th this is one of those locations where the height of that bridge and, and needing to have a flat state space for a station, as we're trying to catch grades, it really pushes the station back down towards Abbott Avenue. So that's that, that's why we're we're showing it in this location where we're trying to uh, get an area that's that's a tangent, meaning straight, so we can get a station in there and uh, fairly flat for that station. So so we're not uh, on a slope. And then after this, we'll have one more video of, of uh, option two for uh, West Broad coming from West Broadway. And this is more of a, a swoop where we go again over that southbound lane and, and get maybe a bit closer connection to the hospital. But it allows us to move that station a little bit more to the, to the south uh, configuration. So it, there's a better connection maybe to the to the um, the trails, the park board, uh, Oakdale, um, and the and the neighborhoods around that, and has a, a connection to that hospital a little bit farther to the south in their campus, and may have a potential for a better connection to their uh, both sides of, of the campus. So the, these are the three videos and the concepts. Uh, um, Chair, uh, if, if there are any questions on this, uh, if not, we can move on to uh, look at uh, Crystal and, and some of the work we're doing there. Any questions uh, at this point? And uh, Nick, great the uh, visuals. I, I fortunately, uh, I'm pretty good at not getting sick when I fly in an airplane, but uh, that uh, <laughs> gives you that real. Kind of movement there, uh, and and as I understand it, we're going to post these videos so people can kind of look at those again and kind of think about yeah. it. Yes, chair. Okay. Mr. Good. Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Irene. Yeah, hey. So th these visuals are really, really interesting. I think, um, I think for some of the earlier comments that you know, a, a comment that Nicole had shared and and some and, and embedded in others' comments, people want to be able to kind of see and feel what's going on in order to make an informed decision. And I, and I really support that. Um, I would recommend that when these get posted to include what the objectives were in any particular rendering, um, you know, whether it's right of way or I think for the North Memorial one, maintaining the frontage road, which makes a lot of sense uh, given, you know, emergency access, just so folks know what is, 
in a particular image what was prioritized or considered in that expression of, of that um, image. And again, really support as much information as possible getting to, to residents so that they can make informed decisions and informed feedback. And so then of course we can be incorporating that wherever possible. So really great work, thank you. Yeah, really great idea. Let's explain what issues we're trying to solve with each video and that kind of helps give a framework as to what we're looking for. Great idea. Any other thoughts? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Bill Blonigan. Uh, yeah, so this doesn't talk about downtown Robbinsdale, but it's the Robbinsdale section of the meeting. So um, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, Chair Zelli and um, member of the Met Council, Robert Lilligren, for coming to Robbinsdale three days ago and having an hour work session with us. Most of what they did is listen, and um, that's nice. Thank you so much. Um, well, I'm kind of taking a bifurcated approach. Hopefully, some of my comments and the city's comments uh, at that meeting uh, tell you that Robbinsdale would like to get its first ever meeting with um, both of our U.S. senators. Since being elected to the council um, in 1980, I've met with every U.S. senator, Democratic and uh, Republican, as part of the Robbinsdale City Council, save these two. We've never met with them, and we would like to have a meeting with them, so maybe you could use your good offices to do that. We've met with uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar one time, and we look forward to meeting with her again. With regard to um, what we were talking about at that meeting, uh, the other part of the bifurcated approach, the, um, the downtown station uh, and all of Robbinsdale, as Mike Steinhauser kind of indicated, we're concerned with pedestrian safety and the impacts on business. So um, just like there's um, studies for anti-displacement, we would like more consultant work to help, uh, A, like have a baseline of what is the traffic like on County Road 81 Botno Boulevard right now? What are the delays in normal traffic? How is that compared to what the projection is uh, once this goes in? So we can tell people, uh, hey, this is how you're, it's gonna be affected. It's gonna be one minute longer or it's not gonna be affected, whatever the case may be, best data. Um, we've raised questions about um, the, the, the width of the, um, of the corridor and what are the, going to be the impacts again to the businesses during the construction uh, how are they going to remain open? And that's important. And maybe your consultant will be telling us about that, or maybe just the the, the whole team from Hennepin County and Met Council. We've um, raised cons um, uh, concerns about what impacts is the second station in Robbinsdale uh, going to have, not the North Memorial one, but the other one um, near downtown. What impacts is that going to have to our uh, businesses there is are you going to have to have a wider lane because of the imp uh, traffic and will that affect us bank elam lutheran church robin center or town center are you going to have to um, buy a portion of one of those in order to make this fit because there's this increased traffic going to the parking ramps or doing whatever um and then i understand that um marcia glick our city manager met with hennepin county staff a day or two ago for like three hours. So hopefully um, she indicated what our concerns are and I don't know what you know was discussed there. Maybe there's something relevant that some Hennepin County person wants to tell us about. Um, but the, the point is, I guess, we love our big sister. We don't, Minneapolis, we don't wanna be relegated to not having transparency and resources from you all, uh, you know, just because we're not a squeaky wheel. So squeak, thanks. <laughs> hey, Mayor, uh, first off, uh, thank you for summarizing, uh, uh, you know, an hour it, it with very, uh, uh, you know, direct and helpful comments. And, and I will say, uh, you know, A, and I'll speak for Robert and myself, appreciating the getting the direct feedback and actually being able to, as that as Marsha would say, walk up on 41 and actually drive around, kind of see it. 
and you know at this phase these questions about impacts both during construction and then afterwards um, you know better understanding the, the, and studying traffic flow before and after and some of the safety concerns as we've heard uh, whether it's pedestrian safety uh, car safety how fast are those cars really expected to go not because of posting speed limits but because of just human behavior and and I think there's a lot of good um, knowledge we've learned in other areas and I think what you're asking is let's apply that knowledge and really get into the levels of details so that's really fair fair feedback and I see George uh, also uh, really important that uh, this uh, concerns are fully expressed and, and understood so uh, the uh, and then uh, we will uh, see if uh, we can uh, get our U.S. senators to uh, so have a connection. So well, we have that uh, we heard that too a lot of clear. So we uh, not that I have any magic wand, but we do have uh, government relations uh, staff and others in personal relationship to ask for that connection. So uh, thank you, thank you for bringing all that up at this point. Thank you. Uh, Maybe we're ready to go on to Crystal. Uh, can I, Nick? Chair yeah, Zelli, can I ask a question really quick, oh, Nick? Oh, I know sure. we're, I know we're early in the design phase, but uh, the the models that you're showing, and thank you for showing those. Um, the the connection to the hospital currently is into the parking garage that sits in front of the hospital and is is not connected to the hospital right now. And I'm just curious, are there plans or how do you envision people getting from the station to the hospital that is across Oakdale, which is there's a street in between that parking lot and the hospital? Yeah, that very preliminary on that, but we have had discussions and we've met with uh, North Memorial a few times on, on you know how we would make a connection there. The, the, what we're showing is a concept of you know, if maybe you know, one option connecting to directly into that park and ride or into the parking lot structure. Uh, North Memorial does identify that as we get into their structure, you know, they would need to, pro to provide, you know, paths or ways for, for folks to get through their campus and, and uh, you know, may need to do, there may need to be some, you know, upgrades on, on that connection between two sides of their campus also. So, uh, early on, but, but we have. Go ahead, Dan. I, think I was going to add um, to Jason's comment. So, what that, where we connect is generally right now anyway is generally into the employees section of the ramp of the parking structure and the employees who park there which is a fairly high majority of employees leave that ramp and either cross oakdale to the hospital at grade um, outside or utilize a tunnel that they have underneath oakdale and so part of what the hospital is looking at is what's the continued viability of that tunnel does that make sense should we talk about, you know, adding on to this a potential Skyway connection from the ramp over? Do we want to increase the at grade crossing outside? Um, what are those various options? So they're conceptual at this point, um, but uh, the, what that could be um, ranges depending on, you know, how we would continue to work with the hospital. Jason, you make a very good point um, being part of North Memorial and that you're going through an unheated garage to um, to a building and then downstairs and then through a very narrow um, corridor, which is vastly undersized, which, and I know there's discussions about taking it out and doing something different. So if I were a patient coming from the light rail to get to North, it is a significant walk to get to North from there. So just a comment. Mike, I would also add that we're learning that the tunnel is also the route by which um, patients arriving via the um, air by the helicopter pad also get over to the hospital, which is not super convenient for them either to follow that entire route. So they're looking at that in association with how those changes might be made as well. So That's correct, yes. And a Skyway would be nice, but that's down the road. Thanks for addressing it. I appreciate it. Thanks. This is a great uh, conversation and feedback. Uh, I also want to point to Bridget's uh, comment in the chat about, uh, in addition to 
providing information with the videos, kind of getting to what is the uh, process and timing for uh, input and decision making. And I think we're going to get to that a little bit later in the agenda. I can't uh, help but mention that I'm looking at Bridget's picture in front of a parking ramp. And um, I think we may want to take a field trip to the airport to understand pedestrian flows from parking ramps to uh, main facilities because, uh, you know, there are opportunities and expertise in how we manage these connections and we should be thinking uh, creatively about that. So great point. We would be happy to have you, Mr. Chair. Bridget, um, I, I'm a regular customer, but I would love to have a tour and maybe with some others thinking about just this question. Uh, all righty, are we ready to go to Crystal? I mean, I, the, the train's packed. Nick? Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, so so moving up to Crystal, and, and uh, we, we did have an opportunity to meet with the uh, Crystal City Council last night in a work session to, to have a good discussion about uh, uh, about this topic and, and some other topics about capacity along 81 and and how to address that. So, you know, one of the options that we that that we that we presented and, and discussed last night is a um, right now at, at Bass Lake Road and and County Road 81, we've identified that that there is a you know a capacity issue um, if we were to bring light rail through this area and how that intersection operates that that you know having six lanes of traffic in this area and and uh, having a station light rail coming through here there's there's issues with the capacity of the operation of that intersection and you know if if we have a station in this location that the safety of how do we get folks safely to a station and, and where would we put the station so uh what we're looking at here and uh, uh we, we 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 put we we shared some very uh rough video of similar to what we saw at North Memorial that hopefully we can share here in, in the future. But uh, what we're seeing here is that Bass Lake Road. Uh, so Bass Lake Road is going up and down through the through the photo. Uh, north is on the left hand side here and and going uh, right to left along through this area it is County Road 81. So uh, one of the things that we thought that that a concept that we're, we're proposing or, or bringing forward is the, the potential for a interchange uh, uh, of County Road 81 and Bass Lake Road. So in this configuration and what you're seeing here is, is County Road 81 would come up and over on what we would you know be a tight diamond configuration. So there's on ramps and off ramps to from Bass Lake Road onto County Road 81. But the County Road 81 would, would come up onto a structure that would go over Bass Lake Road. So the through traffic would not even come to you know what, what's now an at grade intersection. It could just keep moving through there. So um, Helps with the operations of of of, of County Road 81 through here uh, by by eliminating that that uh, um, uh, intersection that signalized intersection uh, with with County Road 81 and Bass Lake Road and it gives us an opportunity what we're showing here that yellow square kind of on the south side or the 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 right hand side of Bass Lake Road is uh, opportunity to keep the station at grade so the station is kind of tucked down as as uh, County Road 81 goes up and over Bass Lake Road. And this offers the opportunity to uh, bring pedestrians, uh, bring customers to that station where they're not having to uh, cross the highway to get to it. You know, there would be crossings uh, in, in this location of, of either the, the on or off ramps, depending on which direction you're coming from. And then another thing that uh, we always want to, um, uh, you know, access from either side of the, the sta station. So you can look at a, a, an access that would come from Bass Lake Road to that station, through that intersection, and also has a potential for a, um, a, a connection that, that, that is a, a tunnel. And when we say tunnel, we'd want to make something that's inviting and open and safe and comfortable for folks, but a tunnel from that south area where you see the cul-de-sac uh, to, that, to that station location. So folks could get through there pretty much and not have to cross traffic. So. Uh, this this is an option that we're evaluating. We'll continue to work on, but you know, really solves uh, quite a few issues. And we just need, we need to make sure that we keep that station that's in that location open, safe, and inviting, and and uh, and and work on limiting impacts of, of of what the an overpass would have for footprint. Um, we can probably move to the next slide, Sophia. Uh, next side is, is Crystal Airport, and and uh, uh, with 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 Bridget on here, uh, she she knows that we've had a few meetings with with the uh, with the MAC 
and uh, we had a meeting with Mac and FFA to discuss this area and, and how um, moving the uh, light rail uh, from the configuration we had before, which was in the in the freight rail corridor, moving it over about you know 95 to 100 feet to closer to the Crystal Airport in this location where we're at grade center running in, in the middle of the highway and uh, evaluating what those impacts would be and 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 how we can get move forward and, and get the, the appropriate uh, uh, permits and permissions that, that, that we need to, um, to build light rail in this area. So we've done some additional work in this area, uh, some additional survey to verify what uh, what the approach surfaces are out there for, for the airport that we need to consider and, and evaluate and and how uh, light rail would fit within there so we're working on 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 those those permits uh with with the faa um mac is helping us on uh, partnering with us to help us on this and and so we can move forward and and make, make sure that this is is not a, 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 a this is an issue that we can overcome so With that, sure that 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 covers the, our, our Robbinsdale and and uh, um, Crystal updates. Uh, we do have a Crystal open house next week, or we'll, we'll be you know sharing a lot of the information that we work on with Crystal uh, next Wednesday, and then uh, we're working on having a Robbinsdale open house here in, in October to meet with the community also. Right, that's helpful. Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, any. Uh... Questions on Crystal? All right, seeing none. Uh, uh, this is Mayor Adams. Oh, go ahead, Mayor. I'd like to make a few comments. Um, you know, thank you, Nick, for coming out and bringing the other staff with. Uh, we had some. We had a great conversation last night. You know, the number one thing that stuck out on a, with us was the the safety issue of where uh, where the station would land. It's kind of tucked down in between and uh depending on how it's how it's done whether it's done with pylons or if it's done with uh, retaining wall type things for getting the incline for that bridge to go over bass lake road i, I think we have some challenges there um the second thing that struck me was i think the amount of uh different properties that would end up being taken so uh, we we certainly have some displacement issues in, in that location as well um one of the things we also brought up after a whole lot of discussion was uh, kind of a bigger picture view of, of, of changing the station to uh, this design and looking at the traffic studies, we see something that's very similar to what we have in terms of traffic flow. And I thought it important to kind of highlight at the end of our conversation that we don't necessarily want the same because uh, albeit that traffic forecasts in the future are very difficult uh, as we as we crowd this this corridor and this goes all the way up and down the line it kind of it kind of takes away some opportunity costs for what happens in the future and i want us all as we go through this this process to be cognizant of that future i mean we can do a lot of things when we put this light rail in place and end up with the same result of what we're doing with from traffic flow today. Um, but again, future future, I think is something that needs to be needs to be uh, thought of through this process as well. So so traffic coming from the northwest, you know, all the northwest suburbs, New Hope, Brooklyn Center, Brooklyn Park, Osseo, Maple Grove. Um, they they all come through this corridor and if we if, and if we have um it, it's kind of the, the main highway uh to access minneapolis and, and ideally i mean primarily hi highway 100 a lot of people turn off on highway 100 um so it's important not just for crystal it's important for everyone along the line to the northwest and it's something we haven't talked about in this in this group and i wanted to kind of highlight that today uh, we talk we talk about it in Crystal quite a bit, but it's important for the other other cities in the Northwest as well. Thank you. Helpful feedback. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, all right, are we ready to move on to Minneapolis? 
Deanne the Solar is going to uh, share an update on some of the technical activities as well as uh, kind of the process for making some of these decisions. So uh, take it away, Dan. Thanks, Chair, uh, and good morning, everybody. Um, happy to see you all here on a Friday morning. Uh, so Minneapolis is, Minneapolis is, as you know, um, has a couple of different uh, issues associated. Not only are we attempting to evaluate and study and look at the viability and feasibility of building the light rail line on a route that is not Burlington Northern right away um, in the Minneapolis area. We're also looking at um, deciding on a, a route between a couple of options that best suits the alignment and light rail for this area. And so to that end, um, and I thought, I, I, I wanna say, I thought Nicole um, set the stage well in terms of just exactly where I wanted to go today is that we know some things, but we need to know much more about impacts and evaluation criteria to help guide you as policymakers and us as a team about which of the various routes, Washington, Lowry, or West Broadway um, makes more sense. So from a Minneapolis standpoint, when we attacked this issue of looking for a route that was not on Burlington Northern right away, we looked at how we were gonna get from Target Field Station to Robbinsdale. We looked at a number of different alternatives and our first goal was really to settle on were there was there a route or various routes that made sense in terms of the ability to actually continue to operate as a as a roadway or as a corridor and have LRT on it. So early in the year, that was where a lot of our focus was. We put some maps together. We selected with the community's help and input the two route options that we wanted to advance for evaluation. And that was essentially West Broadway um, through the greater part of North Minneapolis from the Robbinsdale border with connections to Target Field Station, and then a separate route that would utilize Washington Avenue up to Lowry across East West on Lowry to the Robbinsdale border as well. So that piece, check. Um, secondly, once we had those two routes in place, we wanted to start to, to dialogue and determine where might we put stations along those two routes. Stations not only have the ability to impact adjacent property because it makes the, the alignment wider, but it also starts to set the stage of destinations, available ridership, um, you know, potential future economic development stations on a light rail line are key. So we rolled out some station study areas for analysis, took some feedback, moved some things around and created our station study area maps. So then we realized, okay, so now we've kind of looked at two options and we've got general alignments for the two options. We've got station study areas for the two alignments. Now comes the tough part. How do we decide between those two routes, which of them makes, you know, first of all, are they both feasible in order to build an LRT line on and to continue to advance forward? And assuming that both L, uh, um, alignment options are feasible, which one better serves the needs of the community, the goals of moving people, the goals of, um, that we've all set forth in terms of providing equitable work and such. So there really are two pieces that we wanna do and work on over the balance of this year with regard to this. The first is to start to analyze evaluation criteria that we're now establishing. And the second being to look at more detailed analysis of impacts of both of these alignments based on turn lanes and station placements that are out there. So 
we're, we're, we're in the process of producing numerous maps and tables and charts and guidelines that will help put together evaluation criteria that we can utilize and discuss with the community about how to look at each of these two routes. So what you see on here, for example, is a land use map. This shows the current land use um, in and around the city of Minneapolis on these two pieces shows what land use types are adjacent to and along each of the two alignments and their study areas. So land use, future land use, current land use, comp plans, um, types of development, those are evaluation criteria. We also list some of the others as well. So which of these alignments better serve um, to help provide equity into the community, to help serve um, households of various economic income values, help provide um, improvements in areas that were previously disinvested in. Um, those kind of criteria will be ones that we'll want to evaluate. Community demographics, or the population density, what are the, um, where are the single car, single car households, which areas have uh, more transit dependent individuals, um, those kind of typical demographics between the two routes um, will be evaluation criteria that we'll bring forward. We've done some work um, on both traffic and parking. Um, what are current traffic volumes, future traffic volumes, impacts to turn lanes? Um, where does traffic flow if we close off various streets? Those elements will be part of this evaluation, as well as you know, a very critical topic that we've talked about and that's parking. And so we've started to pull together data on where is there parking today along these routes? Um, where is their availability for parking? Where is it posted for no parking? What are opportunities and what is the current utilization? We've done quite a bit of counting of parking use along both of these routes at various times of the day. Um, and on weekends to get a look at not only where parking is available, but where is parking mostly utilized. And so that will help. And also where are there potential mitigation strategies along either route to help serve both traffic or parking piece. Right away is gonna be a really big one um, when we look at, and I'll talk about drawings next, when we start to look at the station configurations and where we need to put turn lanes along all of these routes. Where are there, where is there need for property acquisition? Where is that property acquisition minor? Like we might need to acquire a couple of feet versus major to where widening for a turn lane or a station may result in the need to acquire um, entire properties. Where are those spots? How do they compare against each route? What are the options along here? in order to minimize those impacts. The next chart brings up some of the others. This drawing here, this map shows you know, key destinations. And so we've put a number of these maps and charts together in order to show, for example, here, how does a West Broadway route versus a Lowry route um, compare in terms of serving key destinations along the route? And here we've got things like all the way from parks to schools, to churches, to, um, to various uh, historical properties and where they may be. Um, and the other parts we'll want to consider some quantitative stuff is which of these two routes are we projecting to um, provide more ridership, which is a key factor in building a transit line, which of these two routes impact travel time, which also impacts ridership. Um, how, how, you know, they're very close. They're very close in terms of length. Um, those are just samples of the various evaluation criteria we're pulling together as a project office now that we wanna bring out to the public that we'll have available at our workshops and at our upcoming networking sessions to really gather feedback about the comparison. So while evaluating on those terms is one, also very important is to understand just what each of these sections along here looks like. So. We're in the process of getting working with city staff and providing options and opportunities that show details 
greater than, I mean, what we've showed the date is here's how LRT can fit along these routes. Now we need to take it a step further. Here's what happens when we include turn lanes that are necessary at signalized intersections, when we put in various different station configurations at specific spots, um, when we add those elements in, what are the right-of-way impacts and how does it affect the adjacent communities? So we've broke the th two route options into six, sorry, seven sections. So we've got a section that is kind of how do we get from Target Field to the Lindale Plymouth area on the West Broadway option, section two being kind of the section of Lindale from uh, Plymouth up to West Broadway, section three being a very tight section of how do we deal with West Broadway from Lindale over to Irving, and then how do we do LRT on West Broadway from Irving up to the Robbinsdale border, including what would be a station at Penn. On the Lowry Washington alignment, kind of how do we get from Target Field Station downtown up to Plymouth and Washington? How do we traverse through the North Loop and make that work? How do we do Washington Avenue from Plymouth up to Lowry? And then se section seven being how do we do Lowry from Washington Avenue over to um, the Robbinsdale border? So we'll have exhibits at our upcoming work sessions for each of these. Um, we'll be presenting options for each of these at CAC, BAC, and CMC meetings in the future. Um, and in each case, to show what are the benefits and trade-offs of various different configurations in each of these sections that lead to, um, you know, the minimal amount of impacts and the greatest amount of community support for the changes that will take place in here. So we're going to be engaging on what works, what doesn't work. Where do you see engagement or opportunities and challenges? These community workshops are expected to take place um, very early um, in early to mid November as we roll this information out. We also hope to have a couple of what we would call, and, and hopefully I'm not going to steal Sam's thunder here, but what we would call community community office hours, if you will, where we will have staff available at locations on the north side for people to walk in, come engage, look at maps, ask questions, and do those kind of things. So that's really that's really a bit of a roll up chair on what we're doing in Minneapolis. It's really to lead us to not necessarily every answer about how to make either alignment work, but to lead us to the communities and the, the project teams and the policymakers' preferences on a West Broadway versus a Lowry Washington route to advance forward on the project. Thanks, Dan. And I know you're just touching the tip of the iceberg here. These these questions are complicated, <laughs> and they're getting uh, much more real as we get more information. I know you're going to be giving more technical information as we enter into these community design workshop process. Um, any, at this point, any any questions for Dan? Any comments for membership? All right, well, uh, stay tuned. I know that um, this is something that uh, uh, we uh, know uh, is so, um, complicated and yet we want to be transparent every step of the way to get these alignment decisions uh, in the community supported uh, alignment uh, you know in the best way possible these are generational decisions and knowing that the impacts both positive negative um, how we look toward the future is um, really incumbent on, on us really being uh, thoughtful and careful and thorough um, and which really leads us to the schedule. Uh, Sam, you're going to take us through how we're going to process the technical information and yet work through to uh, meet these uh, various milestones. So, Sam? 
Thank you, Chair, and good, or good morning, Council members. Um, my name is Sam O'Connell, serving as the project lead on the uh, Met Council side. So as Dan and Nick kind of really took you through, uh, literally at feet and in our workshops, we're gonna be at inches in some of our discussions. Um, kind of my role today is just to kind of pull back a little bit, kind of get back up into the elevation here and take a look at this broader project schedule. Um, so as uh, Nick and Dan and Sophia have shared with you, a lot of the good work both on the community um, engagement side as well as our technical work with all of our communities moving forward, we really see the marriage of both of those pieces coming together with our fall community workshops. So very much what Dan explained coming up in um, for some communities late October, for other communities kind of that early to mid-November, are really being in um, with our residents and our businesses and talking about this. Um, we understand for some folks, this still might be the first time they're hearing about this project. So it allows us the space and the opportunity to just bring folks up if they're new to the process, or um, for a lot of the folks um, around our virtual table today that have been with us since August when we, when we are moving in this different direction with the project, to really see some of that work all come together. So about 14, 15 months of work coming together through those fall workshops. And so those fall workshops provide us an opportunity for a couple of things. To hear from community members, did we get it right? What else is still out there that we haven't um, identified as potentially an opportunity or a challenge and making sure that we're aware and that's definitely on our radar screen and is part of our landscape as we move forward. Um, and also the feedback of the information that, um, uh, that, uh, that we are sharing, both again on the public engagement side of what we're hearing from community members and residents and our businesses, as well as the technical piece. That will help inform our draft report. So we're coming to an opportunity here where we can pull all of that together into a document, um, bring that back out to the community. Again, it really marries our engagement and our technical work all together over this, you know, by that time, very closely to a year and a half. Um, and we would share that with community members and again, kind of really get back out into community, walk through the draft report. What is it sharing with us? Um, what are some of these decision points um, coming up, but really laying out the, grant, uh, the groundwork for, uh, you know, all of the screening and criteria and principles and goals for the project and how a West uh, Broadway or a Lowry option looks. There will be a 45 day comment period in there. So we understand with holidays, um, definitely it'll be a little bit longer. We wanna give everybody the opportunity to really dive in, really understand, connect with staff. Um, this is where we will be out and about and really talking about this more with folks. So our hope is that at the end of that 45 day comment period, we're gonna bring all of that back in. Again, what did we miss? What do we need to include? What do we need to um, and make sure it's embedded in the work that we do in the DNA, not just for the next few months, but as part of the project overall. So then a final report will be produced, so it builds on that draft report and all the feedback. The final report that we anticipate um, would come out in March of next year would also have a recommended route and study station areas to advance further into the project development. So that would be both the engineering and design as well as the environmental review. So that March 22nd time is really where, thank you, what we've heard, we've been able to pull it all together, the technical, the engagement, the concerns, the challenges, the opportunities, the visions, bring that all together in that final report, bring that back out to our communities, also have a 30 day uh, comment period on that as well, where folks would be able to really weigh in at that time and saying, okay, I've heard this, I understand it. You, um, They can see their voice definitely reflected in some of the issues that we've tackled and, and share that as well. So um, again, just kind of bringing us back a little bit of all of this good work that we still need to do, but how it feeds our project uh, going forward as well. I um, just want to touch base on the next slide, um, what will 
be included in the route uh, modification report. So it's the draft report. So it definitely gives us the project history and the reasons and the good reasons of why this project is so important to our region and to our communities and to our businesses. The process that we've gone through essentially since last August and really documenting that process. And then the evaluation. So those principles, the criteria, the goals, and how they were used in helping um, help determine what is an alignment that best serves our communities, not only today, but also into the, into the future as well. And just as a reminder, um, we're really going to lean into those project goals. Um, and the next slide talks about what those um, project goals are and really the improving the transit access and the connections and those destinations, the frequency and the reliability. Um, really, as you heard from Dan and the team, maximizing those transit benefits, but also those development benefits as well, really minimize the impacts that, um, that a project at, at this size does have on communities and really begin to minimize that and maximize the opportunities. And more importantly, making sure that we're advancing our regional equity work um, as with a project that is so transformative. So just wanted to share that uh, with our, our members today, Chair, and see if there's any questions um, about that big picture and how we bring this to a, a close here in the next few months. You remind me that we've been at this for about a year and it's incredible. We've made great progress, but this next 45, 60, 90 days is really critical. So we have work to do, but we're in a good position to uh, to, uh, to tackle it. Any questions for Sam at this point about project schedule? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Mayor Blanagan. So um, Sam, does the December draft report uh, have a preliminary recommendation as to which of the two Minneapolis routes is the preferred route or you you think should be the route? Uh, Chair Mayor Blonigan, the draft report in December will not. The, think of the draft report as really the um, kind of the marriage of all of our technical work and all of our engagement work coming together. And it's really the first opportunity that we're pulling all of that together in one document for the communities to review to um, process, to digest, and really understand what are the benefits of a West Broadway, um, what are the benefits of a Lowry as well, and provide feedback. The next report in March will have the recommendation at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, not a ton of time left, so I wanna make sure we are able to hear from uh, this next subject, which is really important for all of us, um, hearing about our anti-displacement facilitator selection process, kind of where we're going from here. And, uh, you know, hats off to Hennepin County and all the anti-displacement uh, work that it goes even beyond this. But uh, uh, I just want to thank uh, Kathy Gold, who's going to give us an update. Kathy? Thank you, Chair. Um, and good morning, committee members. Kathy Gold with Hennepin County Public Works Administration. I am so pleased um, and happy to announce that uh, we are currently in the process of contracting with um, Center for Urban and Regional Affairs, CURA, um, with the University of Minnesota. And, um, and the fact that we have this amazing project manager, C. Terrence Anderson, to help lead this effort. Um, C. Terrence, he uh, currently oversees the community based programs and has worked. Um, you know, and as equity manager at the Metropolitan Council, um, as well as um, a Milwaukee transportation planner in the past. And C. Terrence uh, resides in North Minneapolis. And uh, again, we're just really excited to have him at the lead of this very important work. So here's a um, kind of look at all of the amazing team that is um, based with the CURA and um, helping to organize and research and um, and bring forward really um, some some things to look at in regard to the anti-displacement work. Next slide, please. Uh, the additions to the Cura team uh, outside of of Cura is Bellwether Consulting and Housing Justice Center that will help with um, providing 
analysis and research and um, helping the team to really make sure we're looking at all of the elements here while we're um, you know um, recommending certain policy recommendations um, for anti-displacement. Next slide, please. So uh, we've gone through a couple of these uh, next steps already. Um, as Chair uh, stated, we, we have at Hennepin County gained approval from the board to go ahead and contract. Um, we're working on those uh, that contract right now to execute that, and we're hoping to kick off and um, start the work group recruitment this first week in October. Next slide, please. So here's the table that we've set for the CURA um, facilitation lead. And we're really um, looking to CURA to, to again, um, uh, lead the efforts as a facilitator and provide technical services to assist with this complex work. Uh, the group represents parties and organizations that will help make sense of all the information from the research gathered and what is said in the community and um, it'll be community connected, this work group, and um, have various inputs to help put forward recommendations and for investments for implementation to prevent displacement. So with that, Chair, I'll hand it back to you for any questions or next steps. Kathy, thank you. And I'll just underscore how important this is. I, I can speak as a Former Commissioner of Mendot, uh, you know uh, the the disruption and the and the harm that can be caused from large infrastructure projects, and we just need to have our eyes open now uh, so carefully and and really be responsive to community concern that we're bringing our best thinking and really Kura. I mean, the, every one of those people uh, has their own individual. Uh, reputations and expertise and I just think uh, you know, this is a great group and I think the process itself really offers us uh, an opportunity to uh, get our best thinking and and uh, because this isn't easy you know and but we know that um, we, if we kind of take the time and we honor uh, the intentions the goals uh, we can kind of find a way uh, to get there so uh, and I also want to point out that I I think Kira is going to be very much part of this future meetings, and and maybe Mr. Anderson will be joining us too. So, um, great, thanks, Kathy. And any questions about kind of where we are? We're kind of starting this process, but I think we're starting it in a in just the right way, and it was good to kind of go through this process to find the right team. All right. Well, uh, I will say uh, we have covered a lot of information in an hour and a half, and I was always amazed. Like we'll never get this done in an hour and a half, and we really kind of touched the highlights. Um, I know there's more coming, and in, in between our meetings and at our meetings, uh, I really want to thank our staff, uh, and and frankly thank all of you uh, who have brought us to this point. Uh, we've developed, I think, a level of trust that comes from good communication. A trust comes from good results, so let's you know we're not going to take anything for granted, and know that we're going through uh, what it will be a um, you know challenging process, but it's worth the challenge. Uh, thank you also for uh, these meetings, which we've kind of moved around a little bit. Uh, we have our next meeting scheduled for October 14th. Um, that could also change, so hold on to your calendars. Uh, and uh, but we want to be able to uh, keep this cadence of meetings regularly scheduled because uh, these check-ins now going forward are going to be important. So, having said that, any any last word from anybody uh, for today? All right. Well, listen. Thank you all for your participation. Good meeting, and uh, once again. Uh, Looking forward to seeing all of you uh, again, either digitally or in person. And uh, enjoy this stormy day. <laughs> Take care. Thanks a Thanks, lot. Chair. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. This meeting's adjourned. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, everybody.